So we're going to go into that a little bit today. And we're going to talk about how to do a little social security survivorship benefits and how to maximize the policies to be able to do as much as possible for everybody else. Marcus, my brother, how are you? Good, Luis, man. What is happening? I know you look revitalized after a nice little uh, trip out to Arizona with the boys. So yeah, can't complain, right? Probably the other way around, man. <laughs> it was cool. It's cool. It was really, really awesome. You know, we had the opportunity to attend the 1% Nation from Cody Askins. If you guys don't know who Cody Askins is, follow him on his Facebook. He, uh, he has found a way to put together all, if it says insurance in it, you know, he years towards it. It's not just final expense. It's not just mortgage protection. It's not just Medicare. Literally a little bit of every type of insurance agent. So they were all out there. And he hosts this really cool 8% nation, right? The whole concept of that is that only 8% of the insurance agents are the successful ones to stay in the business for a long time. So there is a big failout rate in this business. And we want to focus on everyone in the IFG partnership to be like, here for the long run and to be success, successful with this. Uh, with that being said, he's going to have an event um, coming up, I believe, in June or July. It's going to be a percent nation in Dallas. And we are having an event um, talking about how to grow your business, hosted by our very own Tyler and Pete Fournier. And that's going to be in May in Vegas. So if you guys haven't had the opportunity, I'm going to make sure that uh, Tyler posts about it and Get you guys the information because it's going to be a great event to be at. Cool. Being said, how was your weekend, my man? Busy, busy, man. Uh, finally, my kitchen's coming together finally. So it's almost almost done. So. It's tough. I had um, been playing catch up here. That's why it took me a second to get on. Okay, guys. So well, let's talk a little bit about this survivorship, right? What is social security survivorship and how do we how do we maximize it so we're walking into homes right and there's a lot of different concepts as as we like to talk about mortgage protection is a concept right like there's no actual mortgage protection like policy in itself if you may say right it's literally just a concept of what we do and why we do it and so it's a way to get into the house once you're at the house the way that I always break it down for them, I tell them, listen, our main goal is going to be to cover the whole mortgage. Not every time are we able to or do we even need to. It really just depends on what your goals are. So let's find a way to maximize that. So now if we're sitting in this scenario that I'm going to show you guys, and if you can, give me, a, give me access to share my screen because I put a couple of things out there. Hey, what's up? Leslie's in the building. Hey, Leslie. It should be good. And so we're gonna we're gonna break it down, right? So when you're sitting down with different customers and with mortgage protection, when you're going to their houses, you're really gonna see all ranges, right? You're gonna have a couple of the go-getter 22 year olds that are gonna go ahead and start buying their first house. You're gonna find some people that are just establishing their families in their 30s and their 40s, and you're also gonna come up with some clients in 50s and 60s. So the the older the customer is, at times the more pricier it might be to be able to fully cover the mortgage so now this is when we can shift a lot of people like to go into the into the what do you call it critical period right critical, critical payment period. plan or a payment protection plan right the concept of that is to just make sure that they have as much amount of coverage as they possibly can to cover the mortgage payment for a long period of time so you got to be very strategic on how to shift to that because a lot of them will say, oh, no, 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 no. If I don't uh, if I don't have the whole mortgage paid for, then I don't want it. You ever run into that, Marcus? All the time, man. Tell me, like, what would you? The all or nothing. So that's what I call those folks. The all or nothing. Exactly. So I'll give you a little bit of my tips, but let me hear from you a bit. What is it that you do to be able to combat those all or nothings? So the all or nothings? The only way to combat those folks is by asking questions, right? So, um, and it really boils down to, Bob, if someone happened to marry, what's the plan for you? And you just sit back and shut up. You want them to give you a good concrete answer. And nine times out of 10, that answer ends up being, well, she'll just keep the house. 
Like, okay, great. Then I unpack the numbers behind keeping the house. So what really sells these products, it's not so much um, these great one-liners or anything fancy, right? It's really just breaking down the numbers and understanding exactly what we're talking about today. Social security survivorship, and how that actually works and what actually goes on. I'm going to be touching on it briefly um, a few weeks back, but mapping out the numbers and explaining that transfer of income and how it actually looks when someone passes away is what gets people to shift their actual mindset. Would you agree? hundred percent. Right. And so a couple of things into that and, and how we go into it. And you mentioned asking questions. So asking questions and setting your tone from the get go is the most important thing. I always tell them, we're going to look to cover the whole house, but if we can't, like Marcus just said, be able to leave something behind is going to be more important than not. But let me understand what you guys are trying to accomplish, right? That's the biggest thing. Like literally find out exactly where they are because sometimes it gets a little uncomfortable and sometimes this is the very first time that they're actually having this conversation. So that uncomfortability that's your sweet spot, <laughs> right? The more you're like, make them think. And the more like you put it into the perspective, you just got to say like, Hey, Mike, Mary, if you, uh, if you guys do pass away, like what's the plan? What's the goal, right? Like, I don't mean to kill anyone here, but like, Mike, you're dead. You can't answer the question. Mary, tell me Mike passes away. What's your next step? Like, what do you do? You you'll get this like blank stares. Let them have a blank stare for like a good 10, 15 seconds and then jump in. You know, what would you want to, would you want to be able to live in this house and stay here? You know, you have a couple of kids, you have some grandkids that are out of the state, but would you maybe want to move with them? You know, this place might be a little too big for you. Would you want to downsize? You have about $50,000 of equity in the home right now. You know, that could be a less little down payment if you wanted to like downsize a little bit, you know, so like, obviously you don't have the actual answer right now, but if you were to just start thinking about it a little bit, what do you think you'd want to do? You know, and don't let them say, well, I don't know. I haven't spotted, I haven't thought about this. Well, of course, you know, and no one thinks about it, but if you passed away tomorrow out of suddenly, you'd have to start making those decisions. So ideally, what your best case scenario would be, well, I don't know. I'd probably need some time to figure things out. Boom. That's it, right? Or I'd want to stay in the house. Awesome. There's a policy right there. And same thing, flip it. You know, if they both have income, Mike, if Mary passes away now, let's go ahead and put it in your shoes. I, all the guys, I definitely want to stay here. I'm not going anywhere. This is my house. <laughs> you know? It's always. just like the every time <laughs> it's always a response. Be like, okay, perfect. And so that's kind of how we start getting into things, right? But now let's start looking at our, our retired couples. And, and what's cool about mortgage protection is that you sometimes run into people that might have maybe just planned a little bit better. They might have uh, not just their social security, but they'll have some pensions. They'll have some, um, some IRAs, stocks, bonds, savings, a little bit of all that, right? So you really want to uncover what they have, what their goal is, if their kids are there. But in this scenario... We're going to just talk about those people that have nothing but their social security, right? And that's really going to be all they're going to be able to count on. Yeah, so so talk about that, let's, let's explain that real quick so people yeah. can understand the thought process behind this. So we're talking about the, the social security options. Um, understand how that actually works, how that actually looks. Every state's slightly different um, in terms of the transferring, but general rule of thumb, it's going to be the greater of the two income. So if Mike, for this example, brings in 2,500 bucks and Mary only brings in a thousand, combined they're $3,500 of income. So if they have a thousand dollar house payment, 1,500 bucks, doesn't matter. They're gonna be able to pretty much afford that pretty comfortable, right? So and, oh, you're good. Uh, in the event that say Mary, or let's just say Mike passes away, he, he's, he, makes, he makes more. That means Mary would then drop her thousand dollar check and assume Mike's check of the 2,500 bucks. So going from 3,500, what they're comfortable with down to 2,500 and let's say a $1,500 house payment, things have gotten a little bit tighter, right? So I'm on, who's not on camera? Oh, sorry, I was reading the comments, but um, that's gonna be the main point, it's a shift. 
things happen. So when I say it varies by state, depends on, for example, Ohio, it's a couple of different places where if they're a state employee, they're not getting a full social security check, they're getting some type of pension program where it offsets. Those are gonna be the one-off cases where you wanna get familiar with your state regulations and how that actually maps out. But in general terms of what we're kind of covering from today's standpoint of just a social security check, it's gonna be the greater of the two checks. So um, I'm not gonna steal Luisa's thunder on this, um, but go ahead and explain the plan, a social security income protection, how that looks, how that works and why we would do it. Yeah, for sure. So this, and you can always steal my thunder, bro. You, you are the thunder in this conversation. <laughs> Um, when it comes to social security, right. And the survivorship part of it. Now these people, and the, if they don't have anything else planned now, they're like that dual income family. Like they need both of those consistent paychecks coming in. You know, anything happens to that, like they're going to find themselves in a really tough position. And so you got to go into that. Right. And, and, and before you start showing, before you start explaining, you want to just dig a little bit deeper and have them tell you more. And so. John, like if you lost Mary's income, like John, like you, you make 2,500, Mary, you bring in $2,000 between the both of you, we're at $4,500, right? And I kind of, I like to make sure I know their expenses. You have $800 going out for the mortgage. You have maybe one car payment, you know, but let's say there's maybe like after you go through all the expenses, you put the lights, the bills, you ask for any credit cards, like, tell me, I just want to really understand and let's highball it all. Like, what are your expenses on a monthly basis? They add up 3,500. Okay. So obviously, you know, we're not rolling in the dough, but you guys have a good thousand dollars of comfortable, flexible um, income coming in on a monthly basis. Probably what you use for like some traveling or visiting or just like enjoyment for yourselves. Um, but would you agree with me that if you take your $4,500 monthly income between the both of you and you lose either the 2000 or the 2500 that things would get pretty uncomfortable? Again, stop talking. And that's when they'll be like, yeah, man, like, I don't know what I would do. Yeah, it's a dual income. How do we, how do we switch from that, right? And so then what we'll do, and just to look into this little, she did I put together for you guys. So, oh, look at that. John and Mary is the same example I was giving you guys. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see the numbers. All right. So in this example here, guys, John, can you guys, you can see that well, John and Mark, Marcus? What are you trying to show? I see the neutral Omaha quote. That's what you're seeing right now? Yeah. All right. So now. There you go. There you okay, go. cool. Perfect. So I'm going to switch over here. All right. So you see John and Mary, right? John has got 67 years of age under him and Mary's got 65. Their social security income here. John's bringing in $2,500 a month. Mary's bringing 2000 combined. They're going to be down to 4,500. Now, if something happens to them, right? If John passes away, his income is larger than Mary's. So just so you guys understand how social security survivorship works, Mary wouldn't just be left with 2000. She would actually keep the larger of the two. In this case, she would keep John's and she would lose hers, meaning that her income would go down from 4,500 to 2,500. And if it was Mary to pass away, John would keep his social security, but lose hers. So no matter what, they're at 4,500 together. If by any reason, either of them pass away, their income is going to go down to 2,500, no matter what, right? So that's a 45% reduction. In this case, that's drastic. How do they manage to live when they're, you know, they're making their bills together? Now, if you bring it down to just $2,500, that's going to be very, very tough for them to do. And so you say, John, Mary, and Peter, Fournier again, let me give you a shout out, man. You did such a great job at explaining this to me. I'm, I'm probably going to do a half as job as as good as a job as what he did. And so feel free to reach out to me. But just so you know, we have some experts here that are meant to be able to help you. So at any time, reach out to them, reach out to Marcus, to myself. We're here to like literally help and grow. So the first two hours of our ride on the plane, I could have just sat there. We could have just BS and enjoyed the conversation. But I took advantage that I was sitting with like a 
G, <laughs> where I was sitting with a veteran, someone that's just very knowledgeable, and I just picked his brain, right? And so the, and that's how he broke it down. He was giving me, you know, percentages. He's like, wow, like the reduction to 45%. That's huge. So you tell him, like, John Mary, that would be tough. That would be like literally like life crippling for the both of you. You know, would you agree that it would make sense to maybe just take like a 10% of your income now so that we can protect that 45% God forbid something happened to the both of you. They'd be like, okay, yeah, all right. So now the way you're looking at it, right? You're gonna take 10% of their income to protect 45% for as long as you possibly can. I'm gonna give you guys two examples so you can really get a good understanding and it's gonna be based on their health and where they're at. I used Mutual of Omaha to quote it just because it's very simple for it to quote. So if we take 10% of their income, right? 90% of their social securities. Now it's going from 2,500 to 2,250 for John. And it's going from 2,000 to 1,800. And between the both of them, they still have 4,050, right? If their expenses were $3,500 on the month, well, you still have over $4,000. You're still going to be able to cover all your expenses. You're still going to have a little fluidity and liquidity to your month. And you're going to be able to protect. But what did that just do for you? You just went from selling maybe a ten, twenty thousand dollar policy because now you're thinking they're older, they're only they're gonna, they're only going to be limited to you know final expense to positioning it to where you have four hundred and fifty dollars a month to be able to put into effect here, right? That's a big number, guys. Like that's a that's a fantastic policy. If you're in a partnership here with us, right? You're taking four fifty times twelve. That's a $5,400 policy in one house. I mean, I don't care if you're just starting off and you're at the 50%, you're still making 2,700 bucks for that. So it's a, it's a great way to learn on how to position it. And the earlier in the conversation you do it, the better your positioning is. And now you just found money to be able to put into place. God bless you, Marcus. No one Thank heard you, it, but God bless you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so- 10% doors protection. They're already like, okay, you know, I see where you're going with this. It makes sense. You're explaining it properly, right? So just because of their age, by now you want to know their health, you know, and, and then you know that Mushil of Omaha might not be the easiest to go with if they're not as healthy, but if they are fairly healthy, you know, um, then you can go ahead and get them the, the live and promise policy. Now, you know, your maximum here is 40,000. Well, to get 40000 with Mutual of Omaha for a 67-year-old, you're now at 243 and that's the maximum in this one policy, right? So you're taking out of the 250 243 and that's going to go ahead and help him that – or help Mary that, uh, God forbid, she pa he passes away, there's $40,000 available. So if she's taking 2500 if we look here now, out of the $40,000 that she gets – to supplement her two thousand dollars of income, and keep in mind her income is gonna go. Actually, oh, I may, I'm, I'm, I actually did this wrong. It should be less. Her income is gonna go up to twenty five hundred eventually. That takes a little bit of time, but if she was taking two thousand dollars every single month out of the forty thousand to be able to to be able to sustain it, it's actually twenty months. So this is actually relevant here. Because for the both of them, you're looking to cover the same amount. So you're going to give them additional protection for an extra 20 months if you're buying $40,000. And that's going to be the same for both of them, right? So the goal is to fill the gap. Find the loss. What's the difference between the two numbers being lost? And that's going to be the gap. So that 2000 yeah, you're right. Just only focus on that $2,000 number. That's going to be the shift. That's sure. a shift. Yep. Exactly. Because this income is going to go up to 2500 Correct. Um, and so now what you're doing is if you, if, if the mutual Omaha policy is the one that you have to go with, you know, you, after adding it all up, well, actually, I'm sorry, the $40,000 mutual of Omaha policy for her would have only been 154 a month, right? When you technically had $200. So between both of it, you're at $397 and out of the $397, this is this is just the uh, final explain the final expense one right now, Mike, and we'll go into it. Um, you're actually not using ten percent of their income. You're using eight point eight three. Still gives you a three hundred ninety seven 
$400 a month policy, you know, they get to keep a little bit more, but it gives them some, some good protection. Now, a lot of people, a lot of new agents, they automatically assume John 67, Mary 65, final expense is the only thing I have. Like that's where I have to go with it. No other options. You know, that's what we got to do. But this is when you got to reach out to your uplines, reach out to your referring partners, start finding out more about what else is available. I went with permanent protection. So if they're very healthy, right, they only take maybe like a high blood pressure medication, maybe just like a cholesterol. They're not diabetic or if, or if they are, it's recent, you know, they haven't been diabetic forever. Maybe they only take metformin, someone like that. They would still be approved for a GUL. Marcus, what does a GUL stand for? Guaranteed universal life, man. That's right. <laughs> guaranteed, right? Not often can you see the word guaranteed in there. So if we look at a guaranteed universal life policy, the way that I set this one up, you know what? I might as well just show you guys because a lot of people don't know how to quote it. And I had it right here. So this is a guaranteed mm -hmm. universal life policy. Like now, express. It's the express one, not the medical. The simple version. Yep. Keep it simple. Especially like if you're gonna go medical, you're gonna not do mutual of Omaha. You're gonna go to all the companies now, right? And then we're gonna start pointing you into probably foresters or or uh national LG, Group. Yep. And yeah, exactly. we're gonna get you out of here. And there's so many more. But we love them because the express is like the keyword, right? They're fairly healthy, you go this route. But now I'm looking at a 65 year old female in Florida, um, non smoker. And I had, I had $200 available for her, guaranteed to age 120. She looks at you like, honey, I ain't never going to make that. Well, your options are only 100, 95, 90, or 85, but it's guaranteed. I tell her, I'm like, you know what? Maybe you do. And in case you do, just play it safe. The difference is not going to be big. And it's going to be able to, uh, but you let them make a decision. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter for you. $200 a month to 120 years old. Doesn't get more guaranteed. It gets her just a little over sixty thousand dollars, you know, sixty thousand eight hundred and fifty-three, right? Um, the payment on the other one that we showed you, I think it was one fifty-three for the forty thousand. One fifty-three here gets you forty-six thousand dollars, right? So it's a little bit better. They can go ahead and uh, they can go ahead and get a little more benefit for them, but you're not limited to forty thousand dollars, so you can easily go over the one fifty-three good reason to use it so the way that i broke it down sorry those are my commissions <laughs> the way i broke it down here is where we're looking at a fifty thousand mutual of omaha guaranteed universal life policy for john is 231 dollars. i was just trying to keep the numbers like as even as possible but even if we were to maximize the budget for both of them right let's let's go ahead and do it if we were to maximize the budget for for John, we had two hundred and fifty dollars. He's sixty-seven. He's a male, and now we can do two hundred. What's it? Two hundred and fifty for him? Yes, there's two hundred and fifty for him. So he gets fifty-four thousand dollars. And then if you take that fifty-four thousand dollars, we divide it by two thousand. Now they have protection for 27 months, a little over two years. That's the concept of that, guys. The biggest benefit out of this is now you're getting policies for 449 between the both policies. You know, you're finding the best way to find money and give them good understanding on the reasons of why you're doing it. So that is how the social security protection works and that's how you're able to maximize the policies to be able to get as much premium for you to help them with and have protection for them so you now shift it from being able to protect the mortgage to protecting the income right and now that she has the same income she has no problem paying for the mortgage for yeah, so, in, in layman's terms Almost as the same exact thing. It's just the shift of words. Um, what ends up happening, people will find more value in replacing their income for 27 months than it is to pay their smaller house payment for six to 12 months, right? That's going to be the main shift, right, Luis? 
that's the main shift right there. Exactly. Just finding a different way of opening their eyes, right? Because what, like you said, the all or nothings, it's not covering the whole house. It ain't for me. Okay. Well, let me show you what is for you. You love your wife. You want to make sure she's okay. You guys are accustomed to living on $4,500. If I took $2,000 away from you right now, would you be okay? Every single month? Mm, no, I don't think so. You know, it'd be tough. Okay. Well, if you took 2,500 away from her or 2,000 from her, it'd be even tougher for her. So, you know, ideally, let's make sure that you guys are okay and give her as much time as possible to make sure that she can make whatever decisions, adjustments, and same thing for you, you know, sell the house, refinance the house, get a roommate in here, um, move with the kids, whatever it is. If we can cover the amount of income that you're coming in, keep you in a comfortable position now, but give you more opportunities, more, more, more ways of being able to handle whatever happens in life down the line. Let's take care of it now. The longer you wait, the more expensive it is, the less protection you have. And if she sells the house, dude, she's going to have the additional $50,000 in equity, whatever's left over in the life insurance. And she's going to be able to downsize or move and, and be okay, which is the ultimate goal of this, right? Yes. I say that often. The ultimate goal of this is for the other person to be okay. Not to pay off the house for the other person to be okay. And their mind just has shifted from mortgage protection to life insurance. And we are life insurance agents. <laughs> That's how we do it. Yeah, I mean, I do the same thing. I just say it slightly different. I say transition on their terms, not the banks. So anytime you're dealing with the house and on the MP side of it or making payments, a lot of people get bogged down of it's the bank, it's the bank, it's the bank. Or I take it a step back and say, it's time to transition on your terms not the bank's terms. So anyone that can give a sense of control in dealing with their house or payments, it makes them feel better about the actual sit situation and goes a lot, a lot further. Um, now for some of the agents that are probably mind blown right now and just kind of confused. Hey, how the <laughs> heck do I pitch this? Or when do I pi pitch this? Honestly, it comes down to questions, asking yeah. questions and understanding the pain points. It's painting that picture, just like Louise painted of, the loss of income, how that looks if Mike passed away over Mary, um, how that looks for the stairs inside the house, the bigger yard, maintenance. I mean, all those things are things that we traditionally should be bringing up anyway, but painting that picture, getting their actual budget of what their expenses are monthly and what's going, what's, you know, what's coming in, what's coming in is fixed. It's not going to change, but what's going out can fluctuate. Or if it's at that higher amount to where they might only be saving a hundred or 200 bucks a month, or they're using every single penny available, this is going to be huge. I mean, if they can maximize what they're spending and let's say, Hey, let's only use 8.83% of our income to maintain that no matter what happens to either one of us, the other person is going to have 27 months of that same income they're accustomed to. Um, that's, that's freaking huge. Um, and it's not just on the mortgage protection guys. I understand all these concepts, they're all talking points and thought process. And it's our job as the licensed agents, the experts in our very fields, is to walk these people down the proper path, educating them, mm -hmm. and also highlighting the pitfalls that they could fall into um, just by being a basic agent, right? So um, take time, have these conversations, dig in. It's okay to be nosy and uncover this information. Um, because I guarantee you, people are not going to be put off by you trying to help them. By you asking these questions to make them better overall, God forbid when someone passes away, I mean, they're not going to be mad at you. I promise you. Um, I've done this very pitch the past two times now, uh, one for my own client, one for Luis's client, and we've actually uncovered some an an annuity money to, to move. Um, there was zero interest, zero value shown in a payment protection plan covering 12 months of house payments. Zero whatsoever. Um, then we ask some of this stuff and then uncover their IRAs, bank accounts, and uncover some cash. And of course, they're not going to be interested in a basic payment protection plan. They don't see the value in it. But when we start talking about uh, some of the advanced market stuff, something like this, or going to the annuity talk, their eyes start lighting up and they're, they're willing to give information so we can help them further. So, I mean, we got one, we got about a hundred grand pending, but we used to got about another 200,000 pending just from asking simple questions, guys. Um, <clears throat> so we, I think we talked a bunch for about 30 minutes. 
what questions do you guys have? Let's hear some questions, some situation you guys might have ran across the past week or two. Let's hear from you guys a bit. Yeah, let's definitely open it up, guys. We got about, what, 15 people on the Zoom. We got, I don't yeah, know, 11 or 20 on Facebook. So right now, if you guys want to jump in, hit us in the chats. Um, you know, we're going to give you guys a couple more minutes. If you want to jump in and ask a question live, you're more than welcome to. Just go ahead and unmute yourself now. Um, but let's give you guys the opportunity to do that. What was really cool, too, while well, somebody's coming up with a question, you know, as we were covering that, depending on where you are and how much income there is, then you just ask, like, hey, that's awesome. You know, I'm so happy I'm able to help you and that's protected. What do you guys have in place in case one of you guys pass away? Oh, Pete just said, what happens if we both die? That's a great that's question. A great question. Pete. Right. So, so you want to go in there. Uh, yeah. On that one, you know, what happens if we go die? I, you you want to cover that ahead of time, you know. You just gotta help them understand. Say, the goal here, whether it's mortgage protection or social security survivorship. Obviously, social social security survivorship is for helping each other out, right? But if they have kids, grandkids, whoever it is, they're gonna be the beneficiary. And now, let's say that there is some equity saved into the house. I always give this advice. Um, I don't know if you do too, Marcus. I'll say. Listen, if you're already thinking that something might happen to you in the future and you don't have maybe one of your kids in the title for the comp for your for your mortgage, it's gonna be something you guys want to do. You know, get your, get them on title. You, they don't have to be in the loan. Transfer on death. You want one of one of those set up. Right. And so then that way, and they're very inexpensive. It only costs like three uh three hundred and fifty dollars. They're done through a title company, and anything happens. It goes to them right away. Doesn't have to go to probate. Doesn't have to. The the, the uh, mortgage company now has to accept money from them. So you can say, hey, there's a hundred thousand dollars of equity in the house, right? We've got to protect that. If your kids, for whatever reason, don't have the funds to be able to handle the mortgage payment for a period of time while they're deciding what to do, if you think about it, someone's got to come in here and clean this place out, sell everything, you know, deck, redecorate it or, or stage it, put it up for sale. Who knows where the market's going to be? Who knows where your kid's going to be? I always use this line too. You guys have been around a little bit longer than me. You know, life is going to throw you ups and downs. You've seen all types of economies. You've been up, you've been down, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, God willing, you're not going to pass away tomorrow. Your kids may be up today, but... Who knows what's going to happen? And what if they're down tomorrow? This right here is going to make sure that it protects that $100,000 that you have of equity in the home, right? So they can go ahead and flip it, sell it, rent it, whatever they want to do. And now not only are you leaving a $40,000 policy, you're now leaving $150,000 in the way to protect it. So if both of you guys pass, your beneficiary is going to be the person. Peter Fournier, does that answer your question? <laughs> hey, it's a, hey, yeah, you forget one major point. I think we're, I know where Pete's going with this. Unlike social security benefits, which just go into thin air once you pass away, this is the only way you can leave a legacy to your kids because of the death benefit. If you think about it logically, social security, that four grand's gone if they both die. Car wreck, God forbid, something terrible happens, they're both gone, right? That money's, there's no transferable purpose to that money. So this is the only setup that you actually can transfer some income to your kids tax-free to get through that transition period. So I think that's probably the biggest point Pete was trying to get at, but it's the hugest value proposition because um, they're older, they understand how the benefits work and that there's nothing for the kids left on over, but um, it's a good value add to say those very words of highlighting that their kids get something um, off of this benefit opposed to doing nothing um, with the social security side of it. Um, that's, that's huge. So hopefully I think, I think I got the one right, Pete. Uh, I hit you with the bingo. So I think there, you hit it, man. There it is. So. <laughs> uh, awesome. I got it. We took over, we took over the question spots and I didn't see anything type in. Does anyone jump in and ask any questions while we uh, got a little more time on here? Mm -hmm. I hate the awkward oh, way. Yeah, while, while people are thinking, I mean, this is huge too. Like I said, this is not just an MP thing. You can break this down 
with the filing expense sale, uh, income protection sale, it doesn't matter the thought process or the, or rather the, the lead type, the thought process remains the same. By asking questions and uncovering potential problems that could occur um, and give yourself the opportunity to present further solutions and build that ultimate package of taking care of the funeral expenses, for seven grand, taking care of the house payment for six months, and then also bridging the gap of loss of income for six to 12 months. Um, it gives you the option to build that policy up from that basic seven, five, $10,000 policy just for burial to be able to get those larger apps because you're jam packing so much value. Um, you're covering all the different bases or all, all the different problem points. That's going to make you stand out as an actual agent, regardless of mortgage protection, final, final expense. It does not matter. Um, makes you stand out as that ultimate solution and has their well-being at the forefront. You're not just looking for the bigger sale just because we're trying to get all the bases covered um, to maximize that transition period for that family. Mm -hmm. That's how it rolls. The more value, the more benefit we bring them, the better it's going to be for everybody out there, right? And for yourself as an agent, because honestly, you're able to segment yourself that much better in your community. And the more referrals are going to come your way, the more you're helping families out, the more that you're going to grow. Uh, with that being said, man, we saw some really cool things this weekend. And I got to spend a lot of time with Tyler. And, and tonight, there's this one guy who did, I think, like $560,000. I think it's like his second or third year in insurance. He's 23 years old. And I get the opportunity to interview him tonight, Marcus. I only can guess who that guy is. The Terminator, right? The Terminator, dude. The, the cyborg himself, Mr. Ryan Lodi. And you guys, you know, if you want to laugh at why we call him the cyborg, then join us tonight, 7 p.m. There's... He is the definition of discipline. Machine. Machine, yeah, it's a machine. Straight it's, machine. It's, it's, it, we all come up with excuses on why we can and can't do things. He doesn't. Right? And Peter, if you're still watching, he, he even says, I got to lubricate this body. Like, he literally is a machine. He drinks four gallons of water a day. But we're going to go into that tonight, 7 p.m. We're going to break down how he hit half a million dollars in production. We're going to talk about what he's doing and now how we're shifting. We're not shifting. We're adding to our focus. You know, we want to start building that legacy, that residual all the way down the line. And while we're all heavily jumping into that Medicare space and how successful we've been at it already and how much more success we're going to have coming our ways. Um, and that's where we're at, guys. If you have no, no further questions, I think we'll have it a, a nice little short one today, Mr. Marcus. Yeah, that sounds good to me, man. Hey, guys, do us a favor. Go on to the streams on Innovative and Friends or the partnership page. Drop a comment of the next topic you guys want us to uh, cover. So I know we've been throwing out some advanced market stuff. Uh, maybe we might do a CRM overview next week. Who knows? But drop some comments. We want some feedback. We appreciate you guys for hopping on. And Luis, let's have a great morning. Let's have a great week, man. Rock oh, out. man. Appreciate you. Talk hey, to you all soon. See Bye. You.